Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. My name is Yaswant. Today we are going to cover one complete project using Jenkins, Kubernetes and Docker containers. So this whole project is going to give you a brief idea like how exactly in industry we are working and how to integrate multiple components, multiple DevOps components together to make our life much easier. So almost creating the containers, deploying the containers, integrating the containers, multiple containers together, each and every step can be performed. So instead of wasting a single minute, now let us begin. So what I am going to do today? My first job is install Minikube. Now our question arises, why Minikube? What is purpose of Minikube? So Minikube is a one node or you can say one server Kubernetes cluster. So using Minikube, you can do your testings in your personal laptops without paying high cost to Azure Kubernetes cluster or Google Cloud Kubernetes cluster or any other infrastructure. So even a single machine, you can run a test Kubernetes clusters and there you can try to deploy as many containers you want to run. So the very first thing we have to do is to install Minikube. So now you might have Windows computer or you might have Macbook. It's fine. How to do it? So to install Minikube, just go to Google and type Minikube install for Windows. And you can go to the first link which you are getting and then you can follow for the Windows. These are the steps already mentioned. You can just go and set up your Minikube in Windows environment. Similar way in Mac OS, the steps are a bit different. Here you are seeing, you can just follow these steps to install Minikube. Now, once Minikube installation is done, which I have already done in our system. So the next step is how to start the Kubernetes Minikube cluster. So to start the Minikube cluster, there is very simple command and the command is Minikube start. So once you run this Minikube start command, your Minikube cluster will be started. So instead of wasting a single minute, now let us open our command prompt or PowerShell or terminal if you are using Macbook. So I am already in my PowerShell. Now just I am clearing the screen and you have to do mini q start or if you want to check the status if it's already running or not you can check that so here i got the error a status error unknown state mini q so maybe mini q is not running it's perfect no problem so just do mini q start and what it will do it is going to start so here you can see the message mini q version 1.3.1 on Microsoft Windows 11 using Docker driver based on existing profile. But yeah, one more prerequisite because Minikube cannot work alone. So for that, you need to install Docker desktop in your system. So the way we have installed Minikube, just do Docker desktop for Windows and install Docker desktop. So just go here on the site and Docker desktop for Windows. I have installed it, so I have not shown you the installations, but Docker desktop is already running in my system. So here you see Docker desktop app is running. So once Docker desktop is installed, then install Minikube. And after that, you do Minikube start, which is going to use Docker desktop and create your Kubernetes single node cluster. So now you can see it is preparing Kubernetes version 1.26.3 on docker 23.0.2 and this is my docker desktop if you see here you can see now minikube two second ago it's already came as running so minikube cluster is ready means single node minikube cluster is started and here if you see my screen here in the screen you can see clearly that the command has completed successfully so now if you run the minikube status you can see so you can see here status host is running 
kubelet is running, API server is running, kube config is running. You might have a question in mind. What is control plane? What is kubelet? What is API server? What is kube config? So these are the different components of a Kubernetes cluster. In Kubernetes cluster, you have the API server, you have kube config, kubelet, and type is control plane. Mainly in the Kubernetes cluster, you will have a control plane and apart from that, multiple worker nodes will be there. But in this case, Minikube is single node cluster. So each and everything is running on the single machine. So it's acting as a control plane. It's acting as a worker node. So everything is running on the single Minikube cluster. So now, our Minikube setup is ready, means Minikube is already running. What is next step which we are going to do? Let us see. So, next step is, if you go to our steps, next step what I want to do, I want to check the network. Like what kind of networks right now I have in my system. So, the command is docker network list or docker network ls command. So what this command is telling that what type of networks is existing in my system. So here if you see minikube right and this minikube is using which driver network this is using bridge network. So whatever the containers you will be running not inside the minikube but outside of minikube they should share the network. So what I mean by they should share the network is, suppose you have Minikube cluster. So Minikube, Minikube cluster. So what we are going to do, we are going to create the other containers, like whatever the other containers will be there, that container has to share the network. So network between the Minikube cluster and the other containers need to be shared. So now, what we have to do whenever I will be running the containers, if I want them to communicate with the Minikube, let us share the network. How to share the network? That part also I will be explaining slowly. So right now you can just understand that Minikube is using the bridge network. So whatever the other components outside of the Minikube, outside of the Kubernetes cluster is there, just allow them to share the same network. Now let us move to the next step. Now, I want to create a Jenkins container. What I mean by this means I am running a Jenkins container not inside the Minikube, outside of Minikube just as a normal container. That's perfectly fine. Nothing to worry. We can run our Jenkins outside of Minikube and then we will see how we can integrate our Jenkins and Minikube using the similar network. So if you see this command, I'll show you in this command, docker run. Docker run is the command to run the images as a container, hyphen D. What is D? D is called detach mode. What do you mean by detach? Detach means it will be running in the background. If you don't put minus D option, then the image will be running on the front screen and you cannot run the next command. So that's why hyphen D means it will running as a detached form, means in the background. Hyphen hyphen name means what should be the name of container. You are telling name is Jenkins. Now you are telling hyphen P 8080 colon 8080. Why two times 8080? So first port is outside the containers. Like see, container is a different world. You want to get something which is running inside the container to the outside one. So the host port is 8080 means your machine and this is inside the container port. So you will be using your Jenkins or assessing your Jenkins on this port. Now this hyphen V option is very important because this is doing volume mapping. What do you mean by volume mapping and why volume mapping is needed? The very first thing is Volume mapping is needed because whenever your Jenkins container is stopped or unfortunately something happened, your system got restarted. If you are not mounting the volume to the local file system, then the data will be lost. So suppose without mounting the volume, you are running a container. It will be running fine, no problem. But if 
your machine got restarted, all the data will be lost. But what I want, I want the data to be persistent. Means whatever the things is happening inside the container, the data need to exist in my hard disk. So for that purpose, what I am telling that map to Jenkins underscore data to this is my local drive volume to where live where Jenkins. So whatever is happening inside the containers in this where Jenkins home folder, please mount to my local file system Jenkins underscore data to. Now. Here you can see what network I am using, whatever the network Minikube is using. So if that is using the bridge network, this is going to use the same network as Minikube network. And then this is the image name Jenkins slash Jenkins colon long term support, LTS is long term support. So this is the image name. So this complete command is going to get the image if image is not existing in our local system, start it on put a TAT, mount the volume to Jenkins data folder. So even Jenkins is restarted, your machine is restarted, still your data is going to be persistent. So let us start this Docker command. So now I am going to run this Jenkins image. So now you see you got a big ID here. What exactly this means? This means your container is running with this ID in the back end. So how to check your container is now running? So docker ps. Docker ps is the command which tells that if the container is running or not. So if you see here you can see 19 second ago this container id is running which is mapping port 8080. Now this 0.0.0.0 colon 8080 means this is accessible to any, any of the IP ranges. Now once this is done, let us try to log into the Jenkins UI. So what to do? Just type localhost colon 8080. So now what you got? You got your very first screen which is going to tell you that how to unlock Jenkins. Right now Jenkins is in the locked state. Now what I have to do? I have to unlock the Jenkins. So how to unlock Jenkins? The credential is stored in this file. So one option is you can cat this file or the another option is you can check the docker logs. When the container is running in the docker logs command you can see the admin credentials stored there. So let us explore the another option docker logs and then your container id. So docker logs and paste the id. So what you will be seeing you will be seeing here. Here if you see Jenkins install setup is required, admin user has been created and a password generated. Please use the following password to proceed the installation. So here you got the Jenkins password. Now just I'm what I'm doing, I'm copying the password and I'm going and I'm pasting here. So what it will do, it will move to the next step if credential is correct. Now next step is customize Jenkins. So Jenkins suggests you few plugins as a mandatory plugins to be installed when you are doing the Jenkins setup very first time. Or if you are very smart, if you already know the plugins which is really needed for you, you can select the second option suggested plugin. First option suggested plugin I generally recommend but if you are too expert, you can select the plugins from the list given here. But suppose I don't know, I don't know because it looks complicated to me. So what I'll do, I'll go back and then I will install the suggested plugin. So this suggested plugin installation has begun. This process might take few seconds to install. So here you see green, green. So this installation will be taking few seconds. So meanwhile, while the setup of Jenkins is in progress, let us understand what next we have to do and we'll come back to this screen in few seconds. So once our Jenkins setup is done, what we can do? You already saw that we can get the Jenkins UI on HTTP colon localhost colon 8080 and then we already got docker logs command and we found the admin password. So now next task is you once that plugin installation is done, you will get a screen where you have to create the new user and then install any plugins if you want to install. Now just go here and 
meanwhile see what is the progress so still it is taking time so let us go through the next step now once this jenkins setup is done we have to install few plugins why few plugins like i want to integrate my jenkins server with kubernetes minikube cluster now how to do that so there is a plugin called kubernetes plugin which is available in jenkins in the available sections i will be showing you that so there we can go and we can install the kubernetes plugin so let us wait till the time our installation is finished so installation is about to complete once this complete is done we'll be moving to the next step so just i'll be back once this installation is finished so let me skip this part now you can see that plugin installation has completed successfully next you have to create your admin account so suppose i am creating devops password also devops confirm password is devops full name is devops email address devops at the rate devops and just save and continue now you get an option to configure your url as per your choice it's fine let us use the same url as of now so save and finish so start using jenkins click on this button and now you can see this is ready now you have to install i told you have to install the kubernetes plugin so click on manage jenkins and then here plugins go to the available plugins and just search kubernetes so this is the first option just install without restart let us install so you are seeing the installation lot of components related to kubernetes is getting installed in our system so once this installation is done then we have to configure our credentials how to configure the credentials that part also i'll be showing you you have to go to here manage jenkins and then you have to go to the credential section so what credentials we have to store first let us understand so now you know that kubernetes has a configuration file called kubeconfig now similar way minikube is having a configuration file so where this file is stored let us see so this file is stored in home directory dot q slash config folder so here i go just i am copying this path going to my powershell clear the screen and just do cat and paste the path sorry cat and then paste the path and here you got the credentials everything here so let us copy this in a file now i am going here and i am creating a new tab and i am pasting it now you understand few things here first thing is these are the places where your credentials like ca certificate is stored then your client certificate is stored client key is stored now you understand for the jenkins to recognize these paths is difficult so it's difficult for the jenkins to understand these path so better you get the credentials from here and then save the credentials in this file as of now so what to do we can go to this path so here if you go you paste the path and then you see your ca security certificate which file i was talking about ca.crt so here if you see you open this file so open with maybe or edit with notepad plus plus now this certificate you got but this certificate is in the decoded format means this file we have to convert this into the base 64 version means whatever the file it is first we need to convert this file to get the actual credential so how to do that to do that you have one site called base 64 encoding so you are just telling that encode my content so just paste your ca certificate here and just tell that please encode for me so now if you go down 
it has encoded it. Just copy this content to this and go to your credentials and here you can paste your content of CA certificate. So now I have pasted this credentials which I got after decoding this. But this is now not a file. So you have to give CA certificate authority hyphen data. Similar way, now this is the place where your Minikube client certificates are stored and client keys are stored. So again, go in the Windows system, type here, paste the path and then you will see client certificate and client key. So again, we can just edit it with notepad. Again, copy this file and then go to this base64 encoding, remove the previous content, paste your new content and then just encode it. So now if you go, you got these credentials as well. So just do control C and go to your file and here what you have to do? You have to paste this. So here just copy this path and paste it and I told you here also this is a file but now we converted it into the actual text. So underscore or hyphen data. Similar way client keys you have to get. If you see here the client key is at the same location here. So just open this again with the notepad. So just I have copied it. Go to the base64 encoding here and again just remove it, paste the content and then click on the encode button. So now this content is also ready. So copy it, go to your file and paste this content as well. Now this content is also ready for us. So what we have to do next? Let us see. So next again change the path to data. We have changed the credentials in this file. Now one more thing, where our Minikube is running. So this is showing localhost, but this is not correct. How to check Minikube IP? So just run the command here. Minikube IP and get the IP. So this is the Minikube IP. So copy this IP, paste it, it in this locations and yeah, this port is 8443. 8443. Now save this file and you can name it config test save as yml and just take the desktop. So here you can save config config test and just save this file. So now config test.yml this file is saved. Now you go to our steps. So now replace certificate authority, client certificate, client keys, certificate authority data. These all things have been changed. Now we have replaced the server with the actual IP of Minikube server. The IP will be output of Minikube IP command which we have done. Kubernetes plugin already we have installed. Now what next we have to do? Next thing is go and set up the credentials in the Jenkins server. So how to do that? Manage Jenkins and then go to the credential sections. Click on the system and then global credentials and then here click on add credentials. So kind is secret file we want to use. Then you have to choose the file. Where is the credentials and everything is stored? Config test was our file name. So let us see. This is the config test file. So open. So now you see config text file is there. Now you can click on the ID. What should be the ID? This is completely our choice. What ID we want to use. But what I have used that I also. So I have given this ID name as test underscore mini queue. This ID just as a credential ID. I am giving this credential ID and then create the credentials. So now this credential is created. So now our credentials are saved. Now we have already installed 
QNX plugin. So we get an option here on the desktop, uh, Jenkins desktop, you see, configure a cloud. So click on configure a cloud and then you have to click on QNX. And here, if you go and see QNX cloud details, here is the credential sections. You see, config test.yml file is coming. Just you test the connections, that connectivity is working or not. So you can see you are now connected to your Minikube Kubernetes. 1.26.3 cluster. So now your connectivity has been established. Just I have saved this. Now our integration of Jenkins with Kubernetes Minikube cluster has been completed successfully. Now what's next? Now the next step is we have to create a pipeline. So what next we are going to do? Now we'll go and deploy a pipeline. How to deploy the pipeline? So pipeline keyword, it will start. This means it's a declarative pipeline. Any of the agent you are running and in the environment variables, you are telling that I have queue config and credential ID is test hyphen mini queue. Now, in the first step, you are telling that install queue cutter or queue CTL. Why queue CTL? Because queue CTL will help you to interact and check the pod status and other stuff. So just using the steps, just using the shell command, we are first downloading the QCTL. Once QCTL is downloaded, we are moving it to the home bin folder. Now I am trying to create a pod. So how to create the pod? So one more step, we are just defining pod.yml file and then defining the API version, kind is pod, metadata, is like sample pod. Here you can name anything. I am naming it. Pod name is DevOps pod. And then it is just going to deploy the Nginx image and creating a pod.yml file for us. And now after that, it will deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. So what you are doing, you are telling uh, run kubectl, then kubeconfig path you are giving here. And in the environment variable, you already stored the credentials and everything. And then you are deploying pod.yml. Whereas you don't have anything, means right now you have the Minikube separate cluster. Jenkins is running separately. But now using your pipeline, you can deploy your pod directly in the Minikube. So now let us copy this pipeline script and go to our Jenkins pipeline. So here you click on new item and then you name it Jenkins pod integration whatever the name and then this is a pipeline project click on ok go here and in the pipeline script paste your pipeline and just save it now click on the build now button so what will happen it will start building it and here you see this round button click on this button you can see the logs so right now it is installing kubectl now it is creating the manifest file and then it, it has got the credentials, it has created the pod and job has completed successfully. And here you see the config is also masked. So it is a none of the credential is visible. Now go to your PowerShell, clear the screen and just see kubectl get pods. Our pod name was DevOps test something. So here if you see DevOps pod is running from last 24 seconds. So now you guys have understood how you have integrated your Kubernetes config details through the Jenkins, how you created the pod and now pod is in the running state. Now, till now, if you guys have any doubts, please put in comment sections. We'll try to answer as soon as possible. Now, the next step which I want to show that you have created the pipelines, you have deployed the Jenkins, and everything is working as expected. But you suppose you want to skip few of the steps in the pipeline. Like I have installed QCTL. Then I want to install the other, other components like Helm. These or I want to install Jenkins. These all things can be done using a single Docker file. So instead of doing each and every step like Dedicately, I have created the Jenkins container. Then I have installed the kubectl using the pipelines. So what we can do, we can paste all these contents in the Docker file directly and we can create the image out of it 
and then we can deploy this. So how we can do? Let us see this step. So first just go to this place and copy the path where my Docker file contents are stored. So if you go here and you will see copy path. Now go to this locations, paste the Docker file path and open it in a notepad. So this is the Docker file. First thing it is starting with from keyword where you are installing your Jenkins. Then which user? root user, then you are installing kubectl, then you are installing, you are setting the helm version and then you are installing helm and then you are setting the path of kubectl. So, now just go here, go to this path and you see your docker file is here. So, just copy this path and in your PowerShell, what you have to do? Just do cd and paste that path. Go there. So now you are in this path. Now what you have to do? You have to build the image. This image needs to be created and then only you can deploy the image. So how to do that? Let us see. This Docker uh, setup is going to create the new Jenkins. So in the previous Jenkins, already we have done all these setups. But since we have mounted the volume, it is not going to be lost. Even I am going to stop it. So Docker PS and first stop it. So docker stop and then your container id. So now I have done the stop. Now container is a stop. Now let us remove this container image. So docker sorry not container image. Now let us remove this container existence. So docker rm and then this is the Jenkins id container id. So we have removed it. Now you see this 8080 port is not, we cannot reach to this port and Jenkins is gone. Now these all stuff again we are going to set up using our docker file. So now what's the next step? Next step is this docker file already you have seen is available at that path. What you have to do? You have to just build the image. So docker build hyphen t and then your image, custom Jenkins agent. First check, is there any image with this name is existing already? So docker images. You don't see any such image is existing. So now what we are going to do? We are going to build the image for docker file. And dot means it will get the current location docker file. So now it has created the image. Now let us see docker images and here you see custom Jenkins agent image has, is existing in our system. Now what's next? Once this is done in the docker images we have seen, now start the Jenkins with new docker image. So now we can start and the data folder is already the old one. You remember, right? Data 2 we have given. So let us start using this image now, this time. So this time if you see the image name is custom Jenkins hyphen agent latest. So now control C and then command V and C. So now this Jenkins is running. Now let us go to your local host and see local host 8080 this time. So now you see. I directly got the credential page. So we have named it as DevOps and then the credential was also DevOps. So now if you go, you see your pipeline is also stored there. This means the volume mounting concept is now 100% clear that even if you destroy the containers, you recreate the containers, but still the volume if it's mounted to the local drive, it will persist your data, it will store your data. So now let us move next. Now. What we can do? We can create another Jenkins pipeline. And in this pipeline, what we are doing? We are again using the queue config credential, same credential. Just we are creating the manifest files and then we are just doing kubectl apply. So just copy this pipeline scripts, go to the new items, test, docker, pipeline, click on OK button. 
and then go to the script section, paste the pipeline, save it, and then click on build now. So now what will happen? Let us see. So this is going to again trigger and the pod name this time is simple hyphen pod 4. So you see everything is done and now this has succeeded. Let us check your uh, pod got created or not. So qctl get pods and here you see simple pod 4 is now okay after 46 seconds. Means this is already running from 46 seconds. So now I hope you guys understood how to integrate your Jenkins Kubernetes cluster, how to create the pod, how to build uh, the Jenkins whole setup using the containers. So how the volume mapping works, how the port mapping works. So thank you so much guys for giving your valuable time. In the coming classes, we'll be coming with more such similar projects. Thank you so much.